So we're going to work through the problems. Like you can see the video twice there on the notes. Um, <clears throat> and the reflections assignment. So it says one gallon of gasoline is put in each of 30 test autos and the resulting mileage figures are tabulated with a sample mean of 28.5 miles per gallon. Assume that the mileage has sigma is 1.2 gallons. So sigma, you need to remember, is the standard deviation. All right. <clears throat> so we've got N is 30. Oh, let me go ahead and start a blank page. Here we go. And this is going to be our scratch work for unit I. Unit I. Don't worry that you can't see it, it's fine. Okay, so, there we go. Boom. And let's go ahead and get that question back. So, part one, we need to determine a 95% confidence interval. So, plugging in the problem. So, this is the um, I1 reflection. All right, number one. One gallon of gasoline is put in 30 test autos. So we've got, there's our N, there's our mean, and there's our sigma. <clears throat> Determine a 95% confidence interval um, estimate of the mean mileage. Well, since we have our data, we can actually go to Staplet. And we have to think, are we doing quantitative or categorical variables? Categorical is proportions. You've said it before. Quantitative is mean. So we're going to do quantitative. And we can actually click on mean and standard deviation. So looking at our problem, we want to know mean mileage. So I'm going to go ahead and go to mileage. All right. And the mean was... 28.5 and 1.2, 1.2, and we had our sample size was 30, and you can begin your analysis. So it automatically knows if you're putting the, um, the mean and standard deviation in that you're trying to do some sort of inference. And currently, we only have a one sample T interval for the mean. And we can set our confidence level here. What confidence level did they want? 95%. So I hit perform inference, and there is my answer. So I can actually, I'll just go ahead and copy this into my scratch word so that you know what I did. Okay, so here we go in the scratch word. Boom. Okay, so my interval starts at 28.05 and goes to 28.95. So that looks, uh, it looks a little tight. Hold, it's probably this one. Yeah, let's see, 28.5, 1.2. Make sure I entered all those in. And sample size of 30. Yeah, I guess 28.95, let me double check. It's a little off, but it's probably close enough, which is strange. 20, yeah, none of these are any closer. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this one just to check. Submit my answer. And boom, okay. So it just seems to be a little rounding error. It could have been when I did the problem, It's I rounded earlier, so I was getting a slightly different answer. What is the margin of error? So the margin of error, let's go ahead and, so that's part B. What is the margin? Actually, I can just type it here, part B. What is the margin of error? is the margin of error. So it helps to have, um, if I look at my notes, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the packet. So we're doing, we'll just pull up any old um, I packet, will be fine. Oh, I don't have it for you guys yet. Um, so if we were looking at margin of error, um, actually I'll cheat off of the AP packets, give me a second because they just did this in the last unit. So we'll look at their H packet. And when we cover the basics, your, your basics are gonna be very similar to what they were doing. And you have, here we go. This is the picture I was looking for. So you have your point estimate is in the middle. 
So I'm going to kind of copy this here. And you should have a similar image in your notes. So you have your point estimate, and your lower bound is um, here 28.05, right? Or you could say 28.07. We'll use what our official answers were. 28.07. Ah, nah, it doesn't really matter. There we go. And so that's right here. All right. And then the upper bound, what was it? It was 28.93. 28.93. And let me go ahead and rotate that so I can align it. There we go. And the margin of error is the distance to the midpoint from any of these lowers. So if I, first of all, I could go ahead and find the midpoint. So the midpoint or point estimate, PE equals point estimate. And that's just going to be the average of your upper and lower bound. So lower and upper bound. So point estimate equals, so we'll take 28.05, 28.0. I'm actually, I realized I was kind of mixing my metaphors, so to speak, because I'm going to use these. So I'm going to assume that my rounding won't be too bad. And so if I put these in Google and say, oh, what do I get when I average 28.05 and 28.95? Twenty-eight point five. Oh, does that make sense? Let's think. My point estimate is twenty-eight point five, so I didn't really have to do that. Oh, yes, it should be the center, right? It should be that same value. So I'm going to put twenty-eight point five and rotate that. So that's my center point right there. So my margin of error is a distance. So the margin of error is distance between bounds and point estimate. So I could say ME equals the uh, point estimate minus a lower bound, which in this case would be 28.5 minus 28.05, and I would get 0 0.45 is my margin of error. So the distance from here to here is 0 0.45. So that's my margin of error. And it should be exactly the same on the other side. There you go. So let's go ahead and see if we have something close up. All right. So I think it's just a minor rounding issue. Okay. What condition is necessary for our calculation? Um, what we need <clears throat> is that n is large. We need a large enough sample size. So this has to do with the central limit theorem that basically says if you have a big enough sample, the shape is normal, all right? Um, then interpret your results in the context of the problem. Well, there is, we if we make Many intervals using this method, about 95% of them will capture the true average mileage. So this is correct. This is interpreting the confidence level. Whoops, my lights went out on my computer. Give me a sec. There we go. Ignore it, ignore it. There we go. So, and what happens if we use a 99% confidence interval? So luckily I can go to the staplet and I can just change this. I can say, oh, let me go up. Actually, I want to just type 99. So here's 28.05 to 28.95, pretty much, right? Now I'm getting 27.9 or 8, yeah, pretty much 0 0.90, right? Well, 27.90 is further down, so it's going to widen. It's going to widen. So we're going to say the interval widens with larger confidence. Okay, and then let me go ahead and hit submit because this is most of the newer material. And we'll check our answers. And oh my, what is this? Oh, it says not necessary. Guess what? We don't have to know. Uh, we don't need a normal distribution of weights. We need a standard deviation for our sample, but we don't need the normal distribution. So that should work. Let's go ahead and resubmit that. And 
then we can see we have them all right. So now onto the older materials. So for which of the following distributions could we use a normal distribution? So if I copy this right here, and I'm going to come here, and you're probably going, wait a second. So let me paste it in there. I'm actually, ah, control Z. There we go. All right. So we're going to check each of these. Let me go ahead and I'll start from the beginning. I caught a typo. That's why you're like, it looks like she's already done ma work magically. Yes. All right. So I need to check NP and N times 1 minus P. So for the first one, NP is 40 times 0 0.9, which is 3.6. This is too small, not, not normal. Okay. It's going to be skewed. All right. We'll say skewed. All right, then we have NP is 25 times 0.4. Well, that one's 10, so that works out. And N times 1 minus P. So if the first one works out, you got to keep going. So it's 25 times 0.6, and that should be 15. So this one works. Both are at least 10. All right. Then we'll just, just to be uh, consistent, we're going to keep checking the others. 40 times 0.1 is 4. Choose. Oh, I did 0.9. This was 36. That's fine. All right. I have to do n times 1 minus p. And that one is 40 times 0.1, which is 0.4, which is just 4. And that's too small. Okay. Now we have, we get four, which is too small. And so I don't have to check it, uh, one minus P. And then I get 30 times 0.85, which is, and I'm probably, I'm going to Google it, which I did, 25.5. So that's big enough. But, <coughs> excuse me n times 1 minus p, which would be 30 times 0.15, is just 4.5, and that is too small. All right, too small doesn't work. So the only one that works is the sample size with 25. All right, so we'll go back and pick that. That one works. Okay. For which of the following would the expected value be 4? So for this problem, what we want to do is expected value is just n times p. All right, so I'll paste it there. So I'll go ahead and do, again, expected value. Which is the mean, by the way. So NP equals 20 times 0.4 is uh, 8. NP with 40 equals 40 times 0.1. Ah, that one's 4. So that one works out. Um, the other one would be 36. And then the other one, which you can see, was 25.5. Uh, so we can see that 40 and 0.1 gives us an expected value of 4. So there we go. There's our answer. Suppose X has a normal distribution with mean 70 and a standard deviation 12. All right, what sample size would result in a standard deviation for the sample mean of 2? So there are a couple ways you can tackle this. It occurred to me that we could actually do this a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and, yes, I'm going to add a page. Excuse my delay there slowing things down. All right. Oh, and let me say unit I scratch work. Okay. That way I know what it looks like. And so let me paste this problem here. So what sample size would result in sample uh, for the sample mean a standard deviation of two. So I'm trying to get a standard deviation of two. There's actually a cool way to do this. So first of all, I can figure this out mentally. Part of it is we need the formula and I'm gonna kind of type it in here. It's gonna be a little bit wonky. We got sigma of, um, and then it's gonna be that little thing. 
this is for mean, so it's going to be x bar, equals, and what it is, it's just sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay? So what I could do is I could solve this for those of you that are algebraically oriented. I want this to be 2, and sigma is 12, so I'll say, okay, sigma is 12 divided by square root of n. And then I could do a little cross multiplication trick. 2 square roots of n equals, so let me go ahead and start. So 2 times square root of n, actually I'll need the f of x here. 2 square roots of n, after I cross multiply, equals 12. Oh, I don't want that square root. Right? And you're like, okay, all right, how's this going? Well, I can divide both sides by 12, and I can say, oh, square root of n is 6. Oh, so that tells you that n must be 36. Now, here's another cool way you can do it. Uh, oh, actually, I don't think it'll work. I was thinking Staplet would do it for you, but here's a problem with the Staplet. So I was like, oh, we'll just put the one quantitative variable, and I know the mean 75 and standard deviation is 12. And what I could have done was, uh, who knows what problem this is, what I could have done is just plugged in the different sample choices. So I could have said, oh, 36, 18, et cetera. But I'm not so sure it's going to give me the stuff I want. Yeah, it's, it's not going to give me, it'll give me the whole interval, but it's not going to calculate the standard deviation. So honestly, you're probably better off doing the math like I did here. Sorry. It won't kill you. Again, what you could have done is instead of solving for this, you could have said, 12 over and try the different numbers, take the square roots of those, and then by the process of elimination, figure it out which one. So if you're like, oh, I can't cross multiply, it's too scary, um, then you could do a different technique. All right? But you can. I have faith in you. All right. What is the probability that x bar is within 1.5 of the population mean? So here's our question. Put it down here. So what we're going to do, we are using a normal model. What's our normal model? Where our mean is going to be uh, 75, but our new standard deviation we said is 2, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a staplet with that, 75 and 2. So let's, and we need to do normal distribution. Oh, actually, I need to do, uh, so that works, I can do that. But what does it say? Oh, it's a t distribution. It's a t distribution. It's not a normal. So it's a little more work. I was like, oh, I can just use the normal, but I can't use a normal because these are means, although I could approximate, but still. Um, what we want is a t distribution. So I have to find what's the um, the t-score, oh wait, hold on, this is sampling distribution, I'm not using t, silly me, I'm using the normal distribution, it's like, how was I going to do this without the normal distribution, I was wondering, we're not doing anything super fancy, so I'm going to put in the mean again, sorry if I got you thrown off, the mean is 75, and my new standard deviation is 2, so 75 and 2, and plot my distribution, and what's the probability that it is within 1.5? So that means 1.5 below, 1.5 above. 1.5 below 75 is 73.5, and that goes up to 76.5. Calculate the area, and I get 0.5467. So I'll go ahead and just take a snapshot of this. Right there, copy. We'll put it in our work here. Oops, don't need that. So hopefully, 0. 0.5467, there we go. We got a match, 0. 0.547. So it should be there. We had a sample size of 36. 
hit submit. And we got all the points. There are all the answers. Sorry for the little delay. I started to get ahead of myself into another unit right here. Okay, and that's it. If you have questions, you can share them here or you can share them in class. Have a great night or day or whatever time of day it is.